This is the Bridge of the Gods. It connects Oregon to Washington, but here's the good part. It's 1,858 feet long. It's 1,131 feet of this metal grating. You know, the stuff that terrifies you when you ride across it, but here's the best part. This is 140 feet to the water, and I don't like heights. Of course, you probably don't like riding across graded bridges either. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. We're gonna go ahead and talk about some tips and tricks and how to get across this safely, more comfortable with lots more confidence. Let's go for a ride. It's perfectly understandable why you might be nervous about riding across a graded metal bridge. First, the fact that the grading makes the bike feel very unstable. And second, because it's metal grading. So how much traction can there be on metal grading? Well, it turns out there's actually quite a bit of traction on the metal grading. And most of these, they have a, a crisscross hash on them. They may even have some paint with aggregate in it that gives you some traction. But you're not going that fast. It's not that big a deal. You're not going to side slip. And the recommended speed on this bridge is 15 miles per hour. So I'm gonna go through at the lowest speed. Now, the reason I'm doing this is to kind of illustrate why I don't recommend going slow. That's the first instinct a lot of riders have is to go very slow. Then if you let go of the handlebars, you'll find that the bike itself really, although it doesn't want to just fall down, it doesn't really want to go in a straight line. And that has to do a lot with the speed. Rake and trail is what keeps that front tire going forward, but it has to be paired with gyroscopic precession. And although your rate control isn't gonna change by going slow, because those are physical attributes, by going too slow, the, the wheel itself doesn't have, it's not a gyroscope, it's not, it's not holding steady on the bike. And that'll make you feel a lot less comfortable. Your tendency is to grip hard onto the handlebars. That's only gonna make things worse. It's gonna make the bike less stable. All right, I've mentioned to a couple times that the, the rake and trail and the gyroscopic procession, the stability of the front wheel is what keeps you upright. If you're not exactly sure what I'm talking about, I'll give you a quick crash course. The rake is the angle of the fork leg, and the farther that fork leg kicks out, the more stable the motorcycle is. The trail is an imaginary line between the steering axis and where it impacts the ground and the plumb line from where the axle is. The longer that line is, the more stable the bike is. The more it wants to self-correct back to a straight direction and the more energy it takes to misdirect that wheel or to pull it off of center. That has to be combined with the stability or the gyroscope that the front tire so that gyroscopic procession that the front wheel has combined with the rake and trail is what keeps that motorcycle going in a straight line and that's why i mentioned that the the big heavy bikes the road bikes the harley ultra classics the honda gold wings the the standards out there are all more stable inherently in this environment because all those bikes have a very long wheelbase, very long rake and trail, and they're also running road tires where the bikes that are considered sport, the super sports, the sport bikes, the dual sports are gonna have a steeper rake because those bikes are less concerned about just the comfort of inline stability, but they wanna be able to turn very quickly, no matter what they are, maneuver or turn. So they have less rake, less trail, and in the case of an adventure motorcycle or dual sport, they're very skinny, very narrow tires, and they have knobbies on them. Those knobs have a tendency to grab all those little grooves and just really move all over the place, making it rather disconcerting if you're not comfortable with that sort of movement. And what I'm gonna do is go back. I'm just gonna go ahead and flip a U-turn since nobody's behind me here, and show you what happens if we just get a little bit more speed. I'm gonna keep it pretty reasonable. I'm gonna pick up a speed to around 25 miles an hour. So I'm about 25 here. So still very 
reasonable. We're not trying to go flying across. But as soon as I do that, you can see the bike becomes stable. Now it's very easy to stay relaxed, to enjoy, to look around, to look up, to look down, and to just enjoy the ride across the bridge because now I'm not doing any work. I'm letting the motorcycle do the work. If you get on a metal graded bridge, that's what you have to keep in mind is just stay relaxed. Don't stress out, don't tighten up. Keep things slow and steady, as in not 50, 60 miles an hour, but a nice steady 20 to 30 miles an hour, steady on the throttle. If you do get nervous and you slow down, just make those inputs gradual. And that's all there is to it. If you're if you've never experienced uh, that feeling of just the bike being loose underneath you, one of the ways you can experience that is by going out and jumping on a gravel road. If you get on loose gravel, you'll get that same sensation, that movement moving around. Also, my other recommendation, uh, since I'm full of them today, if you've never done this before, don't wait till you have a passenger you're on a trip until you're, you're going to get really nervous because attitude matters. And if you can stay relaxed and enjoy what you're doing, then you're going to have a much better time. You're going to stay relaxed. It's not going to be a big event. It's just something you do while you ride. So go find a bridge, spend some time, go back and forth until you know you're comfortable. That way it doesn't catch you off guard when you're not ready for it. Thanks for watching my video. Please leave some comments below if you really liked it or there's things that you'd like to see different. I read everything. I, I love looking at those. It gives me the ideas for what's next. If there's any topics, situations, or products you'd like to see me cover or review, put them below. I put those onto a list for what happens next, what I'm gonna do in the future. Because I use Patreon to support the videos I produce, what I'm really looking for are the topics that are missing, the things that you want to watch, that you want to see, that may not necessarily require or produce a large following of viewers. I just want to reach out and fill in those voids, those blanks that are really difficult to find on YouTube. If you want to be part of this whole project and helping others or you want to thank me for what I've done and what I put out there, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. You can find me. Uh, the easiest place is just go to my website, uh, brettax.com. You'll find the Patreon links. Also, you'll find my podcast. All of the new videos also post up there as well as some other resources and I'll continue to produce those as we go forward. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hitting like on the videos. Until next time, remember, Smile while you ride, because attitude truly does matter.